Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, now that we've had a little bit of time since the Season 2 release and most people are in the proper endgame section of the gameplay loop, a lot of people have gotten to mess around with new mechanics and equipment that simply weren't in the game before. And what I'm talking about specifically here are the new unique items that were added into the game with Season 2, all 12 of them, which is quite a nice number. We're going to go over all the generic, all-class uniques and rank them in, then we'll just sort of discuss the viability of each of the singular new class-specific uniques as well, I'll sort of rank them within themselves, and if they have changed anything up for that class as a whole. This is especially important because in Season 2, you can of course target farm uniques, including these new ones, so if you think that they're worth getting, well, you can get them, purposefully. So I'm just going to go over whether I think they are worth you going for or not, and you can make your decisions based off of that. Starting off with the generic new uniques then, number one without a doubt is Tybalt's Will. Even baseline, most classes have a way of applying Unstoppable to themselves once every few seconds, and especially in Season 2 with the Metamorphosis Vampiric Power, everyone has a way of doing that right now. And the unique effects on these pants simply give you up to 40% increased damage as a multiplier just for spamming your unstoppable proc. Not only is there not really a negative to that if your unstoppable has low cooldown, but that is also a massive damage boost consistently for everything that you do, and it also is in the leg slot, which is typically a very defensive place, not an offensive one, and that just makes this pretty much the best for any build that doesn't already have very specific leg requirements already, at least offensively speaking. Not to mention, even a Aside from that, this item is responsible for a massive bug that is currently in the game. The bonus maximum resource affix that rolls on the item itself, for whatever reason, also boosts the maximum combo points that Rogue can have. So if you've seen clips of Rogues walking around one-shotting things, the main reason for that is this bugged interaction that somehow makes the best new unique even better, relatively speaking, in that one case. The second best of the generics, then, is Flicker Step. This new unique has a massive effect on every build in the game that uses an ultimate ability, and that is a vast majority of the builds in the game, let's be perfectly clear. The actual effect of these are when you evade through an enemy, you reduce the cooldown of your ultimate by up to 4 seconds, to a maximum of 10 seconds of reduction per evade. This is quite possibly the most consistently ultimate cooldown reduction available in the game, and it is available to every class, to every build. So anything that revolves around an ultimate has very, very good reason to actually love this unique. The affixes on it are pretty alright too, pretty nice for anyone who uses ultimate skill also does damage, but even without that, the movement speed is solid, and the unique effect itself is just so valuable that if you want it, it's definitely worth having no matter what the affixes were in the first place. Third place, then, I'm going to say is Zafal's Corroded Signet. Every class in the game has some method of dealing damage over time, and this unique takes the concept of damage over time, which is generally stronger in single target scenarios, and turns it into a ticking time bomb that nukes large packs by giving your damage over time hits a high lucky hit chance to proc an explosion for around 40,000 damage at max item power, which is absolutely nothing to scoff at. As far as potency, this one is incredible, and it also just has so many varied applicable builds and situations for different classes that it makes it a really, really solid addition to the game as a whole, just boosting those builds in general. Fourth up then, we have the Banished Lord's Talisman. The applications where this one works are absolutely insane, it's very potent. This basically brings in a whole new massive damage multiplier of up to 120% any time that you crit and overpower at the same time. There are a number of builds in the game capable of generating guaranteed overpower hits, and they generally go for crit chance anyways just because crit is good, and this amulet also gives you one every time that you spend 300 of your primary resource to a guaranteed overpower. On top of that, it comes with bonus ranks to all core skills, which is silly good as an amulet affix, crit chance, which is great, overpower damage, which is okay, and resource generation, which is absolutely lovely. The actual potency of this effect is extremely high, but the number of builds it can apply to is less than the previously mentioned ones. As far as actual quality of the unique, though, this one is really high up there. I just had to find some reason to put one of these above the other at the top end. These top four, though, just as a whole, are absolutely exceptional new items. Then we get to number five, which is the God Slayer Crown. This one is a great concept, definitely quite strong, just not quite as strong as the others due to some restrictions. The stats on it are great, cooldown reduction, maximum life, damage, and then crowd control duration is just okay, and the effect itself is when you stun, freeze, or immobilize an elite enemy or damage a boss, it pulls in nearby enemies, and then you deal up to 60% bonus damage to them for 3 seconds. And this pull can only occur once every 12 seconds. If it wasn't for that last line of text, I think this would be phenomenal, honestly. The most enjoyable way to clear Nightmare Dungeons is just cleave through the little guys until you find a nice big pack with some elites to really settle in to and just pop your larger cooldowns. So imagine if every time that you were there, you could just pull every enemy in the room into a nice neat pile for you to damage. That would be incredible if this was how it works, and it still is that same thing conceptually, but only once every 12 
12 seconds means that any enemy that moves will, well, move and disrupt the whole thing. But it's still very good, just I would say a tear down from the first four. If I were to fix this one myself, I would say remove the damage bonus so it's just the pull, but then also remove the restriction on the frequency. So that way it's just any time that you apply one of those effects to an elite or a boss, you pull in enemies near you. And that would just be really satisfying that way, but not quite as overpowered because you lose the damage bonus. After that, in our sixth slot is going to be Soul Brand. This chest piece comes with some solid stats considering what it is. Maximum life is great. Lucky hit chance while you have a barrier is nice if you have barriers consistently. Barrier generation, just the same. And then damage reduction from close is just a fantastic defensive stat in general. Then we have the unique effect, which is your healing potion. Instead of healing you, it gives you a barrier for 200% of the healing that you would have gotten that lasts for four seconds. While you have a barrier, you gain 10 to 20% damage reduction just in general. Now, the thing is, I think this is a really solid effect, but I also think that in general for the vast majority of builds, Temerity serves the same purpose, but it does it a lot better and more consistently. Yes, the innate affixes and extra damage reduction are better on Soulbrand, but generally, barriers synergize well with builds that can heal themselves up quickly and consistently, and Temerity synergizes with that naturally because it's the healing that you get above maximum that gives you the barrier, whereas this one requires you to work around your potions. I think it still has its places. It's basically a Temerity replacement that you can use with Tabalt's Will, in the pants slot, but I think it is pretty low down as far as quality of a new unique this season with the others just being as solid as they are. Then the one that I've stuck at the bottom of the list for the new ones is Tacits of the Dawning Sky. The reason is quite simply, there is nothing in the game difficult enough to incentivize the usage of these pants currently. That could change in future seasons, but that is the current state of Diablo 4. The point of these is entirely resistance based, giving you all resist as a stat, maximum life, all stats, and crowd control duration reduction. Then the unique effect itself is when you take damage from a non-physical damage type, you gain up to 10% bonus maximum resistance to that damage type for six seconds. This can only apply to one damage type at a time, but obviously it can reapply itself. This means in situations like the highly elementally focused new boss fights, these would be quite great, right? Except that they're just incredibly unnecessary because what these do is raise your maximum resistance, which implies that to get use out of them, you already need to be at 70% damage reduction. And if you are already at 70% damage reduction, these bosses simply do not do enough damage to really threaten you a whole lot anymore. Essentially, this unique is redundant until they introduce more challenging elemental threats. And that does it for the generic uniques. I think they actually did a really solid job with these. This season compared to the last season, especially where we only got one new generic unique and it was an Uber that wasn't even actually that good. Whereas this season where I would say we got five really solid uniques that apply to a wide number of classes and builds. And that is exactly what we need from these types of items to continually add to the depths of builds and make the game feel fresh. Even that said, the two that I ranked at the bottom, I think just need some slight changes. The first one changes to the item, the second one changes to the game in general to add difficulty, but they're both still really solid concepts. Then we come to the class specific uniques, and to go in a sort of general power order, I want to start with Barbarian's new option, which is the Tusk Helm of Yoritz the Mighty. This thing is absolutely nasty good for the vast majority of Barbarian builds, because most of them do take advantage of berserking in some way, shape, or form. The passive affixes on this are bonus damage while berserking, bonus maximum fury, bonus attack speed, and up to three ranks of aggressive resistance, which translates to up to 12% damage reduction while berserking. Then the actual unique effect is particularly effective here as well, being if you are already berserking and you do something that would give you berserking again, you have up to a 60% chance to actually become more enraged, which makes your berserk state also give you a 15% increased damage multiplier, two fury regeneration per second, and 10% cooldown reduction. All of those effects are fantastic, and this is just a super solid unique that works with a number of different builds within the class. Second up, I'm going to put the new sorcerer unique, Blue Rose. The one caveat to this is that it is only really good for cold damage focused builds, but in those builds, it is extremely exceptional. The base stats are lucky hit chance, ice spike damage, crit damage, and mana cost reduction, all of which are really quite lovely, especially on a ring and for one built around this type of build. And the unique effect itself gives you a 30% lucky hit chance to form an exploding ice spike, tripled up to 90% lucky hit if the enemy is already frozen. Combine that with a solid blizzard build and suddenly you'll be raining down spikes constantly all over the place. It's been overshadowed for obvious reasons by the insanity that is ball lightning builds, but Blue Rose Blizzard is absolutely going to become a mainstay of Sorcerer in the future. Third for class specific uniques, I'm going to go with the new Necromancer unique Blood Moon Breaches. And these are, they're very interesting. The base affixes are good, damage reduction from cursed enemies, maximum life, amplified damage, and bonus rates to curse skills, but the unique effect is the big thing here. Your minions have up to a 7% chance to apply curse on hits, and enemies affected by at least one of your curses take 70% multiplicative increased overpower damage. That is a really interesting concept that gains a ton of strength in a blood-based minion build if you combine it with the Death Speaker's Pendant, especially giving you 
use some really nasty, strong, frequent overpower procs. The only caveat to the strength of this is that it only affects overpower builds, mostly only affecting minion builds, really, so it is very uh, quite specific as far as its use case. Fourth up for class specific uniques is the Rogue with Scoundrel's Leathers, which I absolutely love, but again, the only reason this is where it is is because it only really affects one build, being the trap focused playstyle. This comes with some great affixes on it damage to enemies affected by traps, damage reduction from the same enemies, trap skill damage on a really high roll, then just some dodge chance for fun, but it's the unique effect that is awesome on this one. When you proc the inner sight bonus, your core skills have up to an 80% chance to drop Kel Traps, Poison Trap, or Death Trap. Essentially, what that winds up with is when inner sight goes off and you can just fully spam core skills, every single one that you use has about 27% chance of being your ultimate skill for free with no cooldown, a 27% chance of being a really decent Poison Trap, a 27% chance of being okay Kel Traps, and then a 20% chance of just doing nothing special. Yes, those numbers do add up to 101%, I was rounding, but you get the idea. This is fantastic, but only affects one build, and generally in this build without the unique, you would run it with combo points, so you do have to make some sacrifices to get these cool returns. Fifth then, we have Druid's new class specific unique, which is the Dolmen Stone Amulet. This one I absolutely love, as someone who main Druid in base game and season one. The affixes on it are solid in itself, being up to three ranks of all wrath skills, pretty high nature magic cooldown reduction, resource generation as well, and then maximum life as well, which is lovely. But the unique effect is what makes this really fun. Casting boulder while hurricane is active will cause your boulders to rotate around you in the hurricane. This looks funky as hell, it's silly, and it's actually pretty strong. It's not the top druid build by any means, it's not even in the top three. But what this unique did was take a very, very niche meme type build concept from before, the boulder build, and make it actually genuinely viable. I love boulder builds as a concept, but there was just no good way to make it actually work before in content that actually mattered. However, this makes it actually functional as a main damage ability. And as much as I love it, that's why I put it here last in comparison to the other classes, because it doesn't boost the top end of the class at all in any situations. It only affects one build, but that said, it does have the large effect on that one build to make it actually matter. And I love that that is a thing now because I always loved the concept of a boulder build. All in all, I think we really won out on the new uniques this season, especially compared to last season. Out of the 12 new ones, five of the generic ones are really genuinely good. Two of them are conceptually good, but need some changes. And then all of the class specific ones are at least good, if not great, which means I would say that 10 out of the 12 of these new uniques genuinely make the current game better just by being around. Some of them more than others, but all of them adding at least a bit more depth to various sides of builds and classes and playstyles, and I love it. If I only got to take three things from this season and say to the developers, hey, you did this really, really well this time around, do more stuff like this in the future. One of those three things would be these uniques, because I think they really have added quite a bit to the experience, especially once you reach the later stages of the game, and it gives you an actual goal to focus on that's new and fresh. And that just about does it for today then, everyone. What are your own thoughts on the new uniques? What kind of silly combos have you worked out between the new ones and the old ones, and what are your favorites conceptually, even if they aren't the strongest actual power-wise? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye